to say thank you for sharing this car with us today because it's something that we've wanted to have here at Villa Deste for years and it just seemed absolutely right that uh, this year, the 100th birthday of Maserati, would be the right year to show this car. Now to give you an idea of how special it is, people turning up in uh, 2014 in a 16-cylinder six Bugatti may think they have something special, and perhaps they do, but this Maserati, back in 1932, already sported 16 cylinders. It's called a V4, the model name, V because of the engine layout, 4 because of 4 litres, and it was intended originally as, if you like, a Formula One car, a racing car which, at a pinch, could occasionally be used on the road. But its raison d'etre was purely competition. Trouble was, it was so complex and expensive that Maserati struggled to find buyers for any more. So this one car, after its racing life, was sold to the Rome Maserati dealer, and he found a client in a local doctor, a physician. I can imagine the conversation in which the Maserati dealer told him that this would make an excellent road car, and what do you mean it's not practical? Of course, it helped this was a rather successful physician. His uh, best-known client was the Pope, and this physician purchased this to use it as a road car. He lent it to uh, a driver to take to the Tripoli Grand Prix in Libya in 1934, which it, it duly did. The only problem was that the owner hadn't actually, there's a parallel here, uh, hadn't actually told his wife that he'd bought the car. And, uh, and so for a number of years, he could only use it on very selected occasions. But despite that, I guess being Italian, he still couldn't resist the, the opportunity to have a spare wheel cover at the back that told all other road users that they'd just been overtaken by a 16-cylinder Maserati. Now, the car was sold before the war to a Dutch biscuit tycoon, a young biscuit tycoon, who was waiting for a, a Maserati Grand Prix car that he'd ordered that hadn't arrived. He got the car home to Holland, and then the war broke out. So what did he do? He took the engine out of the car and hid it in his bedroom for the next six years. End of the war, engine comes out of bedroom, goes back into car, and what's the first thing that he does with it? He drives it all the way down to Modena, sorry, Modena by now, so we've changed from Bologna to Modena. He drove it down to Modena to collect his Grand Prix Maserati. And rather than leaving this there and collecting the new car, he actually towed the other car home behind this one, and it became probably the world's fastest tow car. In fact, probably the only, only tow car that was faster than the racing car that was on the back. It had a few more uh, changes of, uh, of owner before it ended up with an Englishman in the 1950s who used to use it on the road, had an engine problem with it, and then it sat unused for the next 20 years until finally it was discovered with Adolfo Orsi's help in the 1990s and it naturally gravitated to Lawrence Oriana's collection in Connecticut, USA. We have to say, it's one of the most spectacular cars we've had here at Villa d'Este. Larry, I'm grateful to you for, for bringing the car. I'm especially grateful for Mrs. Oriana for persuading you to bring the car, and I hope she's enjoying herself. Thank you to both of you. Now that's what 16 cylinders sounds like. What a machine. Now we're going to fast forward 20 odd years, 20, 